Okay, Biology 107 fans, we're here to do that flip lecture on mitosis and everything that we talked about prior to this, uh, the whole process of replication, replication bubbles, forward or leading strands and lagging strands, this all has to occur before mitosis occurs. And remember, if we're talking about the cell cycle, we're talking about Okay, if I draw the cell cycle for you, this is not going to be pretty, but right, so here's a circle of the cell cycle. You're going to have a very small portion where mitosis occurs, right? Then you're going to have after mitosis, so this is mitosis, after mitosis you have G2, GAP2, and then somewhere after that you have the S phase and after the S phase you have G1. Remember, S phase is synthesis. Synthesis means you're going to do replication then. Okay? What happens in the first G1? As Alex told us, we are going to check for errors. Make sure that replication has occurred correctly. During mitosis, we're going to actually separate the duplicated chromosomes. And then in G2, we're going to check and make sure that the separation was done correctly. So it's another check. And that's what we're talking about with mitosis. And mitosis occurs in all somatic cells. You're going to see the process of mitosis is the separation of chromosomes. And you're going to see that this is going to be very similar to what happens when we do meiosis. But let's just do mitosis. It's easier. We'll start with that. Here, what we're talking about is, here you have, right, if I point out, in the very beginning we have a parental cell that has four chromosomes. And prior to them being replicated, they just look like linear strands. Those are chromosomes. They're linear. They're double-stranded DNA. After the S phase, they look like this. You have uh, sister chromatids that are bound together at the centrosomes. Right? And when we draw these chromosomes now, right, they may look like an X. Right? And you can draw them like that or you can draw them like this. But what it really means is that you have a centrosome at the arrow and these are sister chromatids so this is a replicated chromosome so in the top how many chromosomes do we have in the parental cell we have four chromosomes in the next cell you also have four chromosomes they are duplicated and they have sister chromatids but they are still considered four chromosomes you count the number of centrosomes to know how many total chromosomes there are. And following mitosis, after you separate sister chromatids, so you separate the sisters, then each of the new daughter cells has four chromosomes. So mitosis is just about allowing us to make, right, we can Divide, cells can divide and continue on in having exactly the same number of chromosomes as they had in the parental, parental line. The steps of mitosis, okay, this is an easy way to remember, I, P, P, met, but interphase is not part of mitosis. So interphase is everything except for mitosis, and it includes G1, S, and G2. So mitosis itself, mitosis is really this process, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. How do we remember these? These are, you know, that's why I gave you the IPP mat, so PP mat you, if you want to go with. And the only one that really, if you need to just remember one, remember meta, meta means middle, middle, and that means the chromosomes get lined up on the middle, the metaphase, and then you can try to go backwards from that. Okay, so I know, right, I, P, P, mat, 
And I know that chromosomes are lined up on the middle there, and then this must be when they start getting separated. And then the last one is where we make new cells. So what's P? P, 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 the first P, the second P, metaphase. So this, the one before it is prometaphase. And prometaphase is when they're pushing the chromosomes left and right. And prophase is when we start to condense and have all the chromosomes become visible. So there's ways to remember this. Try to use something that will help you to remember it. That's how I remember it. So what do you really need to know? You need to know the main features of each of the steps. And we've already discussed most of the main features of interphase that I want you to know. All right, so uh, one thing I want you to remember, so during interphase... Okay, you have interphase is really, so you have mitosis, and then you have G2, S, and G1. And during the S phase is when you do the duplication, synthesis. And you not only have to synthesize DNA, but you have to actually synthesize a new centrosome. I think I said it incorrectly before. Centromere was what we have that connects the two chromosomes, right? So let me just redo that, right? So this is a centromere, right? If we draw it like this, this is a centromere. So go back and correct that. So centromeres are what connect the chromosomes, the sister chromatids. Centrosomes are what actually generate the microtubules and they have another name, a centrosome is also called a MTOC, microtubule organizing center. And so during the S phase, we also have to generate a second centrosome. And that's so that we can generate the spindle complex during mitosis. So interface is G2, S, and G1. Synthesis is obviously the most important part of that, at least as far as the mechanisms they're concerned. And then let's move on to mitosis. So this is showing you the different phases of mitosis. So you have prophase, prometaphase, and metaphase. I think we're going to see bigger pictures of these, but this really sums it up, what I want you to know. During prophase, you start to be able to see chromosomes, all right? The chromosomes condense, and what that means is they go from being really, really long spaghetti strands that you can't possibly separate to shorter, fatter, what we normally recognize as chromosomes that, are, that have sister chromatids, the X's that we see, that, the typical chromosome that people know what it looks like. So that's what happens during prophase. You also get the beginning of the separation of the centrosomes, so the spindle complex gets started. At prometaphase, the main thing that happens is you see the breakdown of the nuclear membrane, the nuclear envelope, right? So how are we going to separate into two cells if we, right, if we actually still have one nucleus? So the nucleus has to be gone. And once the nucleus is gone, now the chromosomes, right, in metaphase, get attached to their spindle fibers, and they get pushed back and forth until they're lined up on that middle plate, the metaphase plate. So here are the words for that, right? During interphase, you're going to duplicate DNA, and you're going to duplicate the centrioles that make up the centrosome. There are two centrioles per centrosome. So you go from having two to four centrioles. Okay, prophase, you see chromosome condensation, prometaphase, nuclear envelope breaks down, metaphase, you have, right, the chromosomes get pushed onto the middle of the metaphase plate. Once you get lined up, right, and there's some checking that goes on, the next phase, anaphase, right, is really when all of a sudden, wham, we start to pull these chromosomes towards the periphery, towards the centrosomes, right, these are centrosomes. You pull the chromosomes, right, and you see that they're being pulled by the centro 
what is it, centromere. Each of these has a microtubule associated with it, and they get pulled out to the edges. And the last phase is telophase, and that telophase you see that you have the new nuclear membranes are formed. And right at this point, you could, if, if we can, we can just cut the cell in half and you would be able to have two brand new cells. So those are the phases of mitosis. So here are the words for that, that you need to know. At anaphase, the chromosomes get pulled apart. How are they pulled? They're pulled by microtubules generated on the spindle complex. And the spindle complex is made of centrosomes, which are the same thing as the MTOC. Okay, and at telophase, the nuclear envelope reforms. We weren't quite done. All right, there's another... Uh, last part of this cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is where we actually have the membranes pinch off. So in mammalian cells, you actually get uh, a ring around the the inside of the cells, and they're not showing you here, but it's actually part of the cytoskeleton that that gets shorter and shorter, and so you end up right with the cells getting less and less connection until they finally pinch off, and then you have two new cells. This place where I've marked the arrow is called the cleavage furrow. And that cleavage's furrow is generated by actin, which is one of the cytoskeletal filaments that we talked about, the smallest of cytoskeletal filaments. Here, right, you see the cleavage furrow being generated, and I want to be clear about this, the actin is on the inside of the cell. It's like having an internal belt on a pair of pants, right, it's not on the outside, but it's on the inside and it can cinch, right, together, and if, you, if it could, right, if it could cinch all the way together, it would cut you in half as a person. In, inside the two cells, right, these daughter cells, it cinches all the way to the point where the two cells will now separate from one another, and you have two brand new daughter cells. In plants, it's a little bit different because plants can't do that cinching in. Plant cells are very different, right? They have that cell wall, and so a cell wall, they also have a cell membrane. And what happens when we make two new daughter cells is a cell membrane has to actually form between the two. And just importantly, it's called a phragmoplast. That, that term, it comes up. Okay, comes up in standardized exams, and that's just something you need to know. It's also called the cell plate, and that's what actually makes a membrane between the two new nuclei that have formed. And where does that membrane come from? We now know that Golgi uh, starts secreting vesicles, right? We know that the Golgi is part of the secretory process or the exocytic process and that has to do with vesiculars transport and vesicles get secreted from the Golgi and start fusing together to make the new membrane. Okay, it's called the phragmoplast. Here they're showing you, right, the cell plate or the phragmoplast that's being generated. There's actually Golgi that's secreting these vesicles and the vesicles are beginning to fuse and they're making this membrane down between the two new separated. I don't know that this is actually at the very end. I don't see the nuclear membrane, but the nuclear membrane is going to form around these two new uh, daughter cells and as that happens the phragmoplast is also forming at the same time. And that's it. That's really what you need to know as far as mitosis means. Now, questions Remember, we had some questions about how many chromosomes are there, and you know, let me give you a couple examples. I said, okay, let's say you're 4n, all right? Parentally, you're 4n, and you have a total number of chromosomes, let's say a total number of four chromosomes, okay? What does that really mean? So if you have a total number, 4n equals 4, right? The first number, as far as 4n, is the number of duplicates you have of any particular chromosome. So if you have 4n, it means you're going to have 4 of the same chromosome. If 4n equals 4, n equals 1. The n is the number of chromosomes, different chromosomes you have. So in this case, it means that you have chromosome number 1, you have 
chromosome number 1A, you have four of them. You have 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. So these are all exactly the same chromosomes. All right, and then what would happen during mitosis? So during mitosis, you would have these chromosomes, right, during the S phase, you would have these guys get replicated. So the replicated DNA, let's just make the, the replicated DNA look like this. All right, so now we have X's, or as best I can do is X's, okay? And then these guys at metaphase, so if I draw a cell, the nuclear membranes have broken down, and, and what I'm going to end up with at metaphase, right, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, and it's really random how they get lined up. At metaphase, they're going to line up, and it's random what happens, right, so if these guys are bound to the microtubules, what's going to happen with the two new daughter cells? As these guys separate, oops, I'm trying to make it smaller and push this up to the top. When those guys separate, okay, here's that se same cell. After they're separated, you're going to have red, 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 and one green. And over here, you're going to have green, 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 and one red. So, right, this is let me just make this clear, right? This was chromosome A. Ooh. Make that a little less fat so you can see it. This was chromosome B. This is chromosome C, chromosome D. And so over here you have A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. And so when these cells pinch off, right, and you end up having two new daughter cells, each of the new cells will have two, three, four, they'll have A, B, C, and D. All right? So the beauty of this is every time we do mitosis, you end up with exactly the same, right? You end up with exactly the same chromosomes. You have four N. All right? So there's four chromosomes. The total number of chromosomes is four. All right? And you have in this case, you have one chromosome. Let's do another example. Okay, what if your 2N, like we are, but the you have a total number of chromosomes of 10? What does that mean? So your 2N, which means you're going to have two of each different chromosome. And if you do the math, 2n equals 10, n then will equal 5, which means you're going to have five different chromosomes. Now you can label them a, b, c, d, e, or you can label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't matter. So you're going to have five different chromosomes. Now, at... at before the S phase, right, you have five chromosomes. So let's just say you have chromosome one. So let's do A. And we know that you have two versions of it. So you have A and B. And then you have chromosome two. So you have this one. So this gets complicated. So that should be one A and one B. And then you have two A and 2B. And then you have 3A and 3B. And then you have 4A and 4B. And that should be a B. And then you have... Gotta make it a little bigger, I can't do it. Okay, so then you have 5A and 5B. So you have 10 total chromosomes in there, right? There's how many lines? One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10. You have 10 total chromosomes. So after mitosis, how many total chromosomes do you have? You still have 10 total chromosomes. Okay, mitosis, you have 10, you end up with 10. Okay, during S phase, these all, right, get replicated. So then you end up with, it's easier just to draw X's, right? So you're going to have X, 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 And how many X's do I need? 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 X's. All right. So these guys are going to all get lined up on a metaphase plate. I'm going to make this smaller again. Okay, I'm going to push this off to the side. And what this means is at metaphase you have X, 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 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are all lined up on the metaphase plate and they get pulled by the microtubules so that you get one of each sister chromatid pulled to the new cell. Oops, that's not one. I made a mistake there. How do I get rid of it? Can't. Can I get rid of it like can't get rid of it like that? Alright, I'm gonna get rid of it by making white. Alright, so and I'm saying this is not the right place because I need fatter. Oh, it's hard. It's hard to do this. Alright. There, because I couldn't tell where my X's were. All right, so bottom line is, let's see, here should be another one, here should be another one, here should be another one. All right, and so when these two get separated, what you end up with in the nucleus is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sorry, that one should be a little larger. All right. So you need to practice this. So let me give you one to practice. If I tell you that you are 3N and that N equals 3. Okay. So I'd like you to try to do that. Draw it. Come in with that drawn. That's going to be your first Moodle upload. On Monday. So what would it look like at metaphase? What would it look like? So number one, draw before S phase. So how many chromosomes are in the nucleus? Then Two, draw for me what it looks like after S phase. And it's easiest to use X's. Okay, three, draw what it looks like at metaphase. And four, what do the two daughter cells look like? All right, that's going to be your first Moodle upload, so you might want to practice it. All right, and this is something that comes up on exams all the time. Students have trouble with it, but I'd like you to do the best you can. Okay, there you go. Have a good weekend.